guy named Robert Collier wrote a book called The Secret of Ages in 1926. And in the book, he said an amazing thing can happen for you. If you go to bed at night and you take all of the world's problems, all the negative and all the positive, all the stuff that's going on in your brain, and you don't cheat your brain any piece of that. You give them all the negative and you give it all the positive about your life and what you're worried about. You will wake up in the morning and your brain will give you the answer. And I dare you to try that because I went to bed after I read that book. How can I get people to understand about outwitting the devil and I woke up doing this? <laughs> the devil? So I call it the mixing bowl. It works. It work. It's unbelievable how well it works. A lot of people have always said, let me sleep on it. A lot of times you feel better when you sleep on it. It's the same theory. All I'm saying is what happens is you usually go to bed and you only think about one side of it. You don't think about the other side. You know, they're, I'm worried about what's going on at work. They're going to fire me or what they're going to do. But you don't ever give it the other side. Well, if I was an HR person or if I was my manager, how would they be viewing me? If you put all of the information in there and don't cheat any of it, you will wake up the next morning or the next morning with an answer on how to handle that situation. Because fear is not knowing the answer to a question. All right, one other quick tidbit. Has anybody here read Stephen Covey's book, The Eighth Habit? Highly, highly recommend you get that book, especially if you're over 50 years old. And Stephen Covey, you know, wrote the book, Seven Habits of Highly Successful People, right? And what he said in the eighth habit is, the greatest moment in life is the aha moment. He calls it the aha moment. He says that you have to first figure out what your purpose is. Why are you in this room, in this county? Why? What do you bring that nobody else brings? What's uniquely yours? A lot of us haven't thought about that. But you need to spend some time thinking about that. You need to know what, why you're here. And then he says you need to spend some time thinking about what you're really passionate about. And he said once you figure out your purpose and your passion then the greatest moment in life comes when you help somebody else figure theirs out. It's huge. If you want to change your office, if you want to become an effective leader, if you want to be a great parent, that's what it's really all about in my mind. But you can't help somebody else out if you haven't spent any time thinking about it yourself. So I want to share one thing with you. And what I have found is how we look at our purpose. And what I mean by that is people will tell you they're unhappy in their job. Lots of you here are not happy in the position that you have in your job. You think the answer is another place. And I found that I don't think that's the case. You see, what I believe is you haven't really thought about what you're passionate about from 40,000 feet. And so I coach a lot of college kids. And one of the things I tell them, think about back when you were 10 years old. Did you want to be a fireman? Did you want to be a policeman? Blah, blah, blah. And I want you to think like that. Because what you need to figure out is, am I, do I get a lot of excitement out of solving problems? Do I get a lot of excitement out of coaching people? 
or teaching people or managing situations or exploring new things. And then once you figure that out, look at your job and am I getting seven or eight hours of that every day? Because if you're not, you ain't happy in your job. And it's got nothing to do with where you work. If you need teaching moments, then you need to be in a job, in a position where you're getting teaching moments. If you don't think that's correct, then why do people work for next to nothing to teach, to coach, to be a fireman, to be a policeman? Because it's just full of what they're passionate about. And money's not the reason why they're there. So the best way for you to get most, the people that come into your office that are just excited about being there is because they're getting a lot of that in their eight hours. Y'all look depressed. <laughs> Amen? Amen? So, I want, to, I want to give away a book. I want everybody to get their business cards. It's also a secret way for me to steal your email and put you on my emailing list. And I want you to take that business card and I want you to just throw it up in the air like you're 10 years old. There you go. Just throw it up in the air.